Last March, 22-year-old Eleanor Williams was jailed for eight and a half years after falsely claiming she'd been raped by multiple men and trafficked by an Asian grooming gang. Well, her lies caused an outpouring of anger and several protests in the town of Barrow in Cumbria. And now a BBC documentary has revealed the extent of her deceit. Our investigative reporter Anna Collinson has the story and some of you might find the details in this report upsetting. I guess you've kind of... You can probably guess what's going to happen. Um, if you just listen to my... This is the moment Eleanor Williams was arrested in 2020. So being in breach of the court bail so in relation to charges of perverting the course of justice. A court would later find that she had repeatedly lied about being raped, which legal experts stress rarely happens. Right, so they, they lift her on now and we're, and we're recording. So we need to Exclusive to police footage shows Williams' deception began three years earlier when she said she'd been raped at a party. She withdrew her involvement, but a year and a half later, she makes a fresh allegation. So this chap pushing out the door couldn't. He had a knife, he was waving it around. Notice her bruised cheek, which a judge later decides is self-inflicted. Just weeks after this, she claims she's being trafficked and raped by a gang of Asian men. Whichever man was willing to pay the most money you go with, well, they tell us they can treat us how we want because they're white trash. It was, we need to do something to help this girl. What is going on? She describes the properties she was forced to go to in great detail. It wasn't like a house, it was more like a roll shop. Orange the police treated Williams like a victim, but suspicions began to arise after they spent two days driving her around a town she said she'd been recently trafficked to and was unable to provide any leads. Was it on that route that you took us on, or was it somewhere else? I don't know. Not sure. And what it ended up being was me driving around fairly aimlessly, just in the hope that something might look familiar to Ellie. That's when I first started wondering, myself personally, is there any truth in this? The following week, her lies unravel further when police are called to her home. You all right? Injured and seemingly intoxicated, what? she makes more claims of being trafficked. An investigation takes place and this is the innocent young man she accuses. CCTV from that night shows the pair met by chance in Preston when he asks her for a lighter. It's Williams who pursues a conversation. She's then seen on camera in Barrow and Furness, walking home with no visible injuries. But when police arrive at her flat 20 minutes later, this is what they find. Um, I'll help you. I'll help you. Shall we get you an ambulance? In court, a judge ruled these injuries were self-inflicted and that she was play-acting. We... He also found there was no evidence that she was mentally unwell. Every single allegation she made, we still investigated because there might have been some truth in some of this. And it was really important that if there was, we found it. All of this footage, which has never been seen outside the legal system until today, tells the story of multiple desperate reports. The final one being where Williams was found wounded in a field. Tests would show her injuries were self-inflicted. I can clearly see on this is an evolution. You've got a, a, an awful allegation in 2017, a much worse allegation in 2019, and then weeks later, boom, it, it, it prop, properly snowballs into a, a massive, multi-handed, organised crime group. Cumbria police say this is a totally unique case and want to reassure genuine victims that they will be supported. Williams' lies about an Asian grooming gang led to a spike in hate crime in Barrow and damaged the mental health of the men she wrongly accused. And yet, we may never know. Why did she lie? Anna Collinson, BBC News. And Anna, who put together that report, joins us now. Good morning to you. I mean, it is breathtaking, isn't it? It's jaw-dropping. There was this social media post at first making these allegations... 
But the ripple effects, the ramifications for police, for other young girls wanting to report crimes, and also for the legal system, are huge. Absolutely. And if we go back to May 2020, when Eleanor Williams posted that now infamous viral Facebook post claiming she'd been trafficked and raped by an Asian gang, she also posted several photographs of her bruised face and bruised body. And the community of where she lived in Barrow and Furness were shocked by what they saw. Mm -hmm. They were then further shocked to find out that an hour after that post had gone public, an arrest had been made and that it was Eleanor Williams. But what they didn't know at that time was that Eleanor Williams had been on the police's radar for three years. And they had mounting evidence to show that she was a liar. So what this documentary has done, a year on since she was sentenced for perverting the course of justice, has laid out the depths of her deception, which escalated over time and ultimately exposed her. So we saw there, didn't we, the injuries that she inflicted upon herself. What else did she do to try and deceive the police? Well, it was multi-layered. Um, a key weapon that Williams had was her mobile phone. She would show police screenshots of messages that she would say she'd received on social media, which had contained death threats, contained rape threats and other forms of abuse. And she would say that some of the men that she was accusing had sent them to her. It would later transpire that actually she had sent them to herself. So the police did a thorough investigation, trawling CCTV, looking at phone records, eyewitness testimony, medical <laughs> reports, forensic reports. And actually, at the end of my report, you see a moment where she's in a dark field. Now, Eleanor Williams had claimed that she had been trafficked and raped, but the following day, the police went to the field and found a, a hammer with blood on it. That underwent tests, and the only DNA on it was Ele Eleanor Williams. What is fascinating about this, now that the evidence has concluded, is there's no evidence of a motive, we don't know why she did it, and there's no evidence of any mental health issues. It's very rare, isn't it, to see a case like this? Absolutely. This is an anomaly. Mm. Uh, it's incredibly rare. And yet, the judge, when sentencing Eleanor Williams, said that he was really concerned that this case would put off other genuine victims from coming forward. And that's obviously a grave concern when you look at figures which show that tens of thousands of people who are victims of sexual offences do not report it to police every year. So the Crown Prosecution Service really wants to reassure victims, and they actually point to the Cumbria Police investigation. You see it in the documentary. They take her claims seriously. They investigate them properly. And I suppose on some level they hope that that will be some reassurance to anyone watching who's been affected by something like this. So a year on, um, what are the ongoing impacts of her crime? Well. Barrow has been scarred by her actions, there's no doubt about it. First of all, there are the immediate victims, the men, the innocent men, that she accused of the most horrendous crimes who were affected mentally. Three of them admitted to trying to take their own lives. They were so distressed. There are then, there's then the Asian community. So when the post went public, claiming that this Asian gang that was made up, that had trafficked and raped her, it was the Asian community in Barrow that faced the wrath of that. They received physical threats, um, they were spat at, their businesses were vandalised. We even heard about one man who left the area because he was so scared. And then finally, there's the people in Barrow who supported Eleanor Williams, who helped raise £20,000 to support her. They feel ashamed and embarrassed that they believed her. And they also say that they don't think they can ever forgive her, particularly because they don't know why she did it. And finally, Anna, very quickly, you will have looked into this more than most people, most journalists, even perhaps more than some of the lawyers, because yeah. you've looked from every single angle. Why do you think she did it? Because that would be the question everyone's asking. I mean, it's really not my place to say. Uh, I mean, there's no evidence that she was mentally unwell. That's what the judge said in sentencing. They were presented with some psychiatric reports and he ruled that there was no evidence that she was mentally unwell. So his take on it, all the police officers that have spoken to the BBC have said the same thing. We don't know. The only person that really knows is Eleanor Williams. And for now, she's not. She's standing by her story. Fascinating, fascinating. Hearing about the impact on the community as well. Thank you very much. And you can see the full story in the documentary we've just been talking about, Liar, the fake grooming scandal, at 9 o'clock tonight. It's on BBC Three and also on the BBC iPlayer.